Hey friends, I am back today with a little house mouse, house mouse in the house. And we have the Christmas collection. I have three of the six available to share. So this little guy here is Mistletoe Kiss. And he's adorable. Look at the little... The, this little guy is looking up at the mistletoe, and this one is sneaking the kiss. So this is the one we're going to color today. And these are red rubber um, thick mount, cling mount stamps. And the sentiments are candy cane wishes and mistletoe kisses. And believe in the magic of Christmas. I love that the Spellbinders House Mouse stamps come with sentiments. That is something that is not traditional with the house mouse stamps of the past. And I love that this has been the way that they've been releasing the stamps here recently. The second one here, which I think is my absolute favorite, is Hold On. And this is Monica Friends and Amanda. And so it's like the mommy mouse and then look at this look, look she's holding her tail and then each of them are holding the tail and this one is like hold on so i just thought this was adorable with the little one up there holding on and each of them just with their expressions on their faces and this one he, he can't even hold his eyes open so i had so much fun coloring this one which you will see in a sample at the end of the video so make sure you stay tuned you've got to see this sample so I would love to hear your comments on this one because this one was super fun to color up. The sentiments on this one is, hold on, I'm here for you and have an ice holiday season. So here again, great sentiments. This one here is simply Noel and he's got his back towards us and this one's upside down holding the L with his feet. Just too, too cute. This one has two branches holding the N up. So, and this is Maxwell, Monica, Mud Pie, and Muzzy. So you've got all four of the gang there. So super cute. And this one has Celebrate the Season. So those are the three that I have. And make sure you check the full collection because there are six of them. So I'll have all the links down below. Those are affiliate links. So when you click on them, there's absolutely no charge to you, but they do help me with a small commission. So I really appreciate it when you use my links. So let's see, what colors are we gonna use? We are going to color with Copics. So I always start with skin. I don't know why, but that's just me. And I like to use a skin tone on these guys that's a little more pinkish. So rather than E triple zero, I start with E double zero and go E1 and E2. And then if I want a little more pink, I do bring in um, R20. So I'm going to start just with a base coat of E20. I mean E20. Easier double zero. Sorry about that. And I have zoomed in the camera a little more this time than last time because I did have um, a follower that had mentioned it was hard for her to see my coloring. So I hope this is close enough. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you were able to see everything. These images are super easy to color in the artist drawn lines are very easy to follow now right now i'm just kind of putting a base coat down of the lightest color just kind of filling in and i do the tail also i consider that skin i don't think there's a whole lot of hair on the tail so i color it all skin color these little hands Go ahead and do like I said there's not a ton of shading on these images because um, I just don't really go in depth with the shading um, I do use multiple colors 
but like the artist John line or the artist John um, detail really does a lot of it for you. Like right here, you see this uh, the artist John um, detail there at the bottom of his tail. That is given that dark shadow for you, and it shows you where to um, leave the darkest color, and it darkens it also. So that's what I love. House Mouse is perfect for beginners. So if you're just starting out, these are awesome. They're good for any alcohol markers. I mean, you could use any medium, really. But I am an alcohol marker lover. Oh, got a little some fingers over here. Oh, we got his hand here, too. I always miss something. Okay, then I'm going to go to E01. In here, I'm just going to bring in some shadows a little bit. I'm not going to go all the way out. Just going to go in where it's darker. And like I said, those artist lines give you a little idea. Like his chin, the crease of his mouth, the curvature. Anytime there's a curve... To show the roundness of the face, you're going to have a darker area there to show that it's going around the inside of his ear. See here, it's going around. The artist shows that it's going around. So that's just showing that. Put some here at the hairline. Some at the bottom. Put a little bit of the hairline of his hands. Put some along the bottom of his feet. His ankle. The bottom of his tail. And you're going to notice this is going to fade in. Um, alcohol, as it evaporates, lightens. So you're going to notice after a minute or so, you're not going to see a whole lot of this color because the color is so close to the one before it. E00 and E01 are super close to each other. So you're going to notice that you're not going to see a whole lot of this now that it's drying. You see a tiny bit of it, but that's the reason you use multiple colors. Let me do a little bit here. So then I'm going to go in with the EO2, and you do notice this one. This has a more of a pink hue to it, so I kind of go inside the ears. This is where you're getting your pink, the pink tone that I'm after. It's kind of like almost a blush, but this is where I'm going after that pink, because I, I just think the pink skin tone is cute on the mice. I wouldn't do this unless I was just using it for blush on a human. But for the mice, I think it's cute to just give them pinky tone. And even pull in a little tiny bit of the tip of his tail here. Just to give him a hint of pink. Give him some blush. So you can really kind of see this pink tone coming in. Might add a little bit there too. Now if you want to soften that, you can go back to your E01. Let's say you don't like this where it's meeting and just kind of soften it a little bit. And let's say it's still like you don't like it and still too dark. Go back to your E trip or double zero and just lightly brush it to the center. Don't go all the way to the center because you still want that highlight there. But you can kind of lighten it by doing little soft strokes like that. And you can get rid of that line. 
See that how it's blending in? Like I said, it's going to dry back and you're not going to see those lines. So that's how you can soften anywhere that you see you see any kind of lines that you might want to get rid of. I love doing skin. As you might be able to tell. A little pink there in his ears. Okay, and if you want to add a little bit more pink anywhere, you can come in with the R20. Like, let's give him a pinky nose. And if I wanted to add a little bit more pink to his cheek, I can. I'm happy with that. I might soften it up just a little bit. This is my lightest marker. E double zero. And that's going to soften back a little bit. Okay. So for our mice, we will go with E30. E, let's see. E30. E30. 31 and 34, let's say. Uh, I don't know if 34 might be third. Might be too dark. Let's just do a base coat of E30 first. Let's give them, give him, give him some color first. Now, do we want a brown mouse and a gray mouse, or do we want two brown mice? Usually, the gray mouse is the little baby. Usually. Their tummies are usually a little lighter. The artist leaves it open. You see the, the little highlight that the artist leaves there for you? That tells you that that is usually lighter. Now I'm just scribbling here, guys. Like I said, all the details are already there. That's why I say this is super, super easy. If you want some detailed Copic coloring cards, I mean, something to, they're detailed, but you don't have to work at it, these are your stamps. Very, very effective. I think... I don't know. This one does look a little lighter. Maybe we will go gray with this one. It looks smaller. I mean, maybe we will go gray with her. Okay, so let's just do this one in the brown. That way you can see one of each color. So you get both color combos. Okay, let's go in with E31. Let's just see. And I kind of look at the package sometimes. Well, let me find this package. You can look at the package this is just to give you a hint also. You can look at the package and you can see, because sometimes in the stamped image it's hard to see, but you can see where the shadow lies so you can see where the arm is. In the stamping, sometimes it's hard to see where that is because of the fur lines. So you can see here the artist means for the arm to be right there and right here so with your darker marker you want to kind of sketch that in with little like little lines so, because with this darker marker we want to be able to see where that shadow is there so i kind of use this especially when you're inking when you ink your stamp in black it's really hard to see that. And, and he has a little shadow here too. And I actually used the Misty on this one and stamped twice. And so my lines are a little darker. I like it when I use the Misty and only stamp once with these guys. And my other ones I only had to stamp once. On this one I stamped actually twice. 
and there was just a tiny area right here in the middle that didn't stamp the first time and I stamped it twice to get it and um, I just didn't push hard enough right there I need to get one of those stamping tools and I didn't push hard enough and I was like darn it <laughs> so but so this one was a little darker so it, and when I do that I have to look at the image because of that so I got his little arm under there and then I just kind of go around and here again you've got your curvatures where you want your little your some little dark and darkness and I don't do a ton and I'm not doing a huge difference of color here just only one number off and I just do kind of little little stray marks because this is his hair and now that I'm adding a second color in the first one was just the base coat I just kind of do little stray marks just to give some extra definition in there because hairs are not all the same color There we go. He's so cute. Now I might go in just a little bit with a darker marker and just, oh man, that one's dry. Not that darker marker. And just highlight a little bit of these dark, dark, dark areas. I don't want to do a lot of this. I'm just doing a little bit just to make sure that arm is pronounced. Okay. And if, if you feel like it's gotten too dark for some reason, you can always come back in with your lighter and kind of flick it out. If you feel, if you get to that point and he's like, oh gosh, it's gotten too dark. Just go like that and flick it back in to where it's dark, you know, so where you've lightened it a little bit. If you, if you get to that point, if you feel like, oh no. So, and then when you're done here, take your lightest and just go real quickly over the belly. Don't do a lot, just a little bit. And that way it stays a highlight. And I'm using the side of the marker just for a soft blend. Okay, so that is him in the browns. For the grays, we will use C1, C2, and maybe C4. And if you don't have these, you can use C0 and then C2. You, you know, I mean, you can, you can use whatever you have. But I would, I would stay on the lighter tones. I wouldn't go too dark. So I'm just using C1 here. Like I said, you could use C0. I'm just going to fill her in. Except for her belly. I just love these house mouse. They are just so cute and they're so enjoyable to color. They're stress free is what I feel. I don't have to worry too, too much about my color placement, but the, the outcome is just so good. I just love the end result. It never disappoints. Okay, I'm gonna go back to here and I'm gonna look here. I'm like, okay, where is there any definition it really needs? Well, putting under this candy cane a little bit, some shadow under here. I'll put some under there. And I'm going to add a little bit under here. And a little bit under here. And they act, he actually added a little around the top and gave her more of a belly. <laughs> this marker isn't much darker, though. 
So that was, yeah, only one number up. This one will be a little darker. Yeah. This is more of your cast shadow under that candy cane there. Oops. So, I'll just go just a few little flicks down here. Just to give some cast shadow. And then just a few flicks here and there. This is uh, quite dark, so I don't want to do too much. When you're going into the blacks, you have to be a little more careful. But it does add some texture in there. And I am not pressing hard. I'm just doing some little flicks. Little tiny flicks with the tips, the tip of my pen. Okay, then I'm going to take my lightest, here again, side of the marker, and just give her belly a little color. Am I happy with that? It's going to dry back a little, so I'm just going to go over it again. Okay, so our mice are colored. I'm happy with that. I'm going to give us some ground. Let's see, what ground color do I have? Do I have a ground color? Let's see, what does E81 look like? Yeah, we'll just use this just to give us like a sand. Just so we have some ground down here. Just ground your characters. Like I said, he's got a, he's already gotten the, the detail in there. All right, now the fun part, our candy cane. Okay, I am using R43, 46, and, and for a medium, 35. Now, reds are very juicy. They can bleed. Let's hope that does not happen here. Trick. Take the chisel end off. Okay? When you're coloring. This equalizes the air pressure in the barrel. So, if you ever have blobs come out with your browns or your reds, this is very common. It's because of the air pressure in your barrel. For some reason, these markers are, or these colors are notorious for this. I have a three-part video ser series from way back on my channel. If you've ever had this happen before, I had it uh, happen with a brown in a video, and I just kept filming, and I made it a three-part series. But it, this was way back, like before I was doing regular videos but I actually was able to fix the problem and I showed on there how to fix the problem so if you need a link to that let me know and I'll put a link in but it's for a La La Land video Copic look in my Copic videos or my alcohol marker video playlist but um so yeah take the chisel off so we're going to start and we're going to come in from both sides and right now we are just mapping in where our shadows are going to be this is not our final shadow this is just a map and we're leaving a highlight in the center and we're going to go up every other ring or ribbon so we're just going to map in where those darker areas are going to be. This is just for my guidance. This is how I learned how to do it. I learned from Kitten Clowder this mapping technique. If you ever wanted to dive deep into Copic coloring, Kitten Clowder is a wonderful um, Copic coloring avenue of classes let Elise Keegan know that I sent you okay 
I'm just going to fill this one in down here. Okay, so I'm just going to do one at a time for right this second. So that is our first layer. Then I'm going to take the second marker. I'm going to do the same thing, take the lid off the back. And I'm going to do the same thing, but not come in as far. So these are very little strokes because these are very small areas. And this is my juiciest marker. So I have to be super careful with this. This one makes me nervous. So I'm just barely touching it. I'm being so quiet because I'm nervous, but that's okay. I'm turning this because that makes it easier for me to color. I hope that's okay, you guys. I totally um, recommend that. If, if some people can color best towards themselves when they flick, other people do better away like this. I can actually do it both directions. Um, here again, I'm just going to fill that in and leave it. I know it looks really funny right this second, but that's okay. This marker is actually really dry, so I'm not going to put a whole lot on here, just so I have enough for the video. I'm just going to put like a little line of a cast shadow. Okay, I'm not going to even worry about that last one. Okay, so now we're going to drag all that back out. I'm actually going to take the lightest and just see how one of them looks dragging that out with just the lightest. We might need the other one. Yep. You want to keep that center bit white. And then quickly close it in. You don't want this thick because you want the you want that light to still show. If you go too too deep or too long over it, you're gonna lose the highlight. See the highlight in the center? That's what you're going after. And I probably could have done it even a little better than that, but that's what you want, the dark on the edges and the highlight in the center. Now, the other way you could do this is not to completely close the center, leaving the actual white in the center instead of closing that center. 
and leaving when you leave the white in the center you actually have even more of a highlight um, but I'm gonna go ahead and just do both of them like this I think it's cute and as it dries back you'll see the highlight even more so that's what I'm gonna do on the other side okay here we go so as you noticed here this one has dried now and you can see the shine even better on this one now um, this technique is also really good for things like um, like if a little girl has tights on and she's got stripes on her tights on her legs or socks or anything that's round that has stripes anything like that this is a really good technique for that so I hopefully that helps you a little bit. Now all we have left is the mistletoe. And I've gotten a G double zero and double two. Or zero two, sorry. So we will just color in this really quickly. And then we will put our card together. Then we will show you the other two cards because I've got two more cards for you guys. Here again, these artist drawn line or details are perfect for shading. See all that detail right there in the leaves? Just follow away. And then blend it out a little bit, making sure to leave a little bit still the light color. Really helps teach your brain where to leave the colors. Now, mistletoe berries are white, I believe. So I might just take the C01 and just give them a little shading. I'm gonna leave the candy cane as it is though. I'm gonna just leave it pure white um, so that it just has that stark white to it. Now for our card base, I have cut, I did this little panel of reverse foiling and we're going to put that at the top of our card base here. And it is slightly too large, so I am going to trim it, but I wanted to do that after I glued it. So I will show you where I'm going with this. Oops. I didn't want a shaped card this time with these um, arch dies. So this is what I decided to do. And each of the cards today has a foiled um, element to it. So I'm going to open this up and get my large spellbinder shears. Got a little piece there. And then I'm going to trim this. I really like these shears for doing this. So I decided to do that to the top of the card. Then we're going to use this for the layers. Now this glitter card stock that I got, I'm really impressed with. I ordered it from Simon Says Stamps during their free shipping offer that I advertised on my Facebook group. Um, they had a free shipping weekend or day or something. And I always announce those really special deals over on my Facebook group. It's called um, Heartfelt Card Making with Spellbinders and More. And like scrapbook.com deals, if they're really good ones. I don't, I don't advertise every single deal. But when they're ones that I personally would like to know about myself, you know, as a shopper. And especially 
scrapbook.com and Simon Says Stamp. Those are two companies I'm affiliated with that I personally like to shop from. So I try to keep people that are in my group in the know and let you guys know when they're having really good sales. So if you're interested in that, feel free to pop on over and request to join and just tell me you, you know, heard about me on my YouTube channel and I will let you in and you can join the fun over there. We have a game once a month and um, weekly, weekly things going on and it's a lot of fun. So these dies here that I'm using, let me see what they're called. They're arched something, I think. These are the essential arches. This is them right here. I decided with the house mouths this time, I would go with different shapes. They just went really well with the different shapes. And then I'm just gonna put this right on top here and that's gonna complete our card. Isn't that super easy, but very effective? I just really like the way that would look. And I heat embossed the sentiment using my, um, oh, what is it called? I keep forgetting the name of that ink. Hold on, I've got it here on my left. I'll get it. I need to emboss it in clear. Just let me get this on here straight. Super cute. I'm loving that. Goodness. Versafine Onyx Black is what I've heat embossed and with clear embossing powder. That's what I've done the sentiments all with today. So it's got a little shine to it. And so that is the card that we're making today. So my next card is this one here. And I've used the original foiling here where I foiled with green foil onto an evergreen colored cardstock. And then I reversed foiled it onto white. So that's the first foil and the second foil generation. So those are the two coordinating cards, which you'll probably see in the photographs. And then as my little extra bonus card, and the one that I'm the most thrilled of, my favorite. I'm kind of partial, but are y'all ready? Are you ready? Hold on, I'm here for you guys. I'm here for you. Is this not the stinking most cutest thing you've ever seen? I'm sorry. I'm bragging on myself. This is just too cute. I'm just in love. Now, this background is brand new this month. It is part of the Christmas foiling collection, I believe. Actually, these both are. Um, pine sprays and glimmering moonline, no monoline stars. I think is how you say that. Is that how you pronounce that? Monoline stars, glimmer monoline stars. This is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I foiled it here in. Is it star bright? Star bright, sky bright, sky bright. I almost had it right. <laughs> Sky Bright Foil and on this teal cardstock that was in my stash. And this is actually the back of a textured cardstock, the smooth side. So that's how I did that. And then this was just glimmer or glitter paper from my stash. Always digging through my stash to find something that works. And that's what that is. And of course, I colored it with Copics. And then I used a glaze, silver glaze pen for their skates. Is that not precious? So that's my baby for today. So those are what I have used. And I think I'm done for the day, guys. So you tell me, which is your favorite card? Do you like the one we made today? 
do you like my Noel? Or do you like Hold On? I will see you next time. Hope you've enjoyed. Bye-bye, guys.